I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, so we'll see. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm more on the side of Joe here. I think it's just best for business for everybody. But lastly, it'll be here, a AW, way better match. A way better match. But lastly, here uh, in the AW world, also punk related, him and AJ Mendez are going to be a part of Heels season two starting July 28th. I'm excited, man. Yeah, I enjoyed the first season. Uh, I, I like where everything went. So I'm, I'm happy to see uh, this porcupine looking or no what was his character was he like a skunk or something ricky rabies yes ricky rabies looking forward to seeing the return of ricky rabies i yeah i'm a big heels fan i went and saw the episode punk was in uh at the theater they did like a special heel screening uh downtown and punk was there and he did a q a with mike o'malley uh if you don't remember the host of guts on nickelodeon back in the day he's done other things but yeah. He, he, well, we we know him for guts, and trust me, he delivered on guts conversation. He talked about it in the Q and A; it was wonderful. But anyway, uh, I'll never forget. I sat maybe two to three seats next to Punk, and he didn't say hi to me or anything. He didn't, you know, he was whatever, was fine. I didn't like whatever. I just thought it was cool to be there. But then, flash forward like a couple months later, and we're in the scrum, and he's yelling at me about the the Cabana situation. I'm like. This guy probably saw me and thought, oh, there's Scott's friend. Fuck him. And like, just, <laughs> it's so weird <laughs> looking back on that, knowing what I know now about how he felt about everything. God, you know? Yeah. I, I, I always say there is there is a narrative in silence. And uh, we, we, we always build up what we think or what we uh, feel or how we believe someone else is thinking or feeling. And then it either implodes or it doesn't. God damn, that was deep as shit. I'm going to go smoke later and then listen to this back. (laughs) (laughs) This is the perfect smoking podcast. Uh, It's true. Oh, by the way, uh, welcome Rob Van Dam to the Premier Streaming Network. (laughs) show was announced yesterday. Come by. Let's get high and talk wrestling. Okay. Uh, Now let's move to our WWE block. Uh, Now, this, this I found to be fascinating. So there was this prospectus filing that was put out on Friday about this, what this new company that looks like uh, with WWE and UFC, uh, and what it's going to look like. It's tentatively called like Whale Inc., but that name is going to change. But the big takeaway from this is they detail the kind of uh, timeline to the deal coming together. And at one point they note that uh, Endeavor countered uh, WWE's uh, proposal at one point and said, we'll agree to the 51-49% ownership stake, but Vince McMahon has to stay on as executive chairman until death, resignation, or incapacitation. Wow, dude. We're with him forever. (laughs) For life, baby. He ain't going nowhere. How do you feel about that? Well, you know, they have that old phrase, evil never dies. I think that uh, Vince McMahon, he's, he's, spite will keep this man alive longer than any type of drug possibly could. Uh, he, I, I think he'll outlive Tony Khan. I think that's how spiteful and how business-centric this man is. So we, we're going to have, uh, what's he, 79 now, 78, something like that? Sure. Yeah, I, I think we're going to have another 15 years of just this old man, like, just inkling in, like, who is that? Ah, that's a giant. I like him. So See, he'll I, be one of the- he's made some good choices with the bad ones. He's going to be one of those people where they scan his brain while he's alive and they create this, like, super accurate AI so that when Vince does die, AI Vince will still be in control of WWE. And there will be a version of him running the company. He will never, ever go away. You know? I kind of want them to do, like, a Futurama thing and just have this preserved head just come out. Uh, like, you know how they have, uh, at the beginning of Raw, they have the robot? I want Vince's uh, <laughs> head to, like, his robotic head to serve and swish around the crowd and with just, like, brain juice or whatever, whatever in the jar, just to, to fall on the fans as they cheer. Ah, I got some of his cerebellum in my mouth. Ah! <laughs> and then a suit pops up on that person, and then we just have little Vinces everywhere. Yeah, they're like gremlins. <laughs> <laughs> Grim Vinces. Grim Vinces. It writes itself. So, no, but on a more serious note, 
I put out this story yesterday. It was another Rick Bassman thing. It was from my interview, by the way. Great conversation. It's on the, the podcast feed. But Rick was backstage at Backlash, and he was the first person, to my knowledge, that has noted the Vince's office sign is gone. It is now Paul Levesque's office. After whatever many decades, that sign has been retired. Even when Vince was retired, they were still using the Vince's office sign. Now, come Backlash, that sign is gone. It is Paul Levesque's office. I, again, speculating here. But I think that that Monday night Raw after Mania where Vince showed up and just went Tasmanian devil on the backstage area, I think there were some phone calls <laughs> after yep. that to Ari and and Endeavor that's like, look, we get it. You love Vince. Oh, you're a mark for Vince. Blah, right? Give him the full young bucks. Blah, you know, uh, but we just lost Jay White. We just we're we have talent that want to leave. We have a backstage area that we have women that are now like, I'm uncomfortable that Vince is back knowing what Vince did. And creatively, our fan base took a big old shit on what Vince just put out and the co complete chaos he created not helping us either. I have to believe that in the wake of that, something happened. Because Vince's absence since then and the changing of the sign to send a message to the backstage area. That no, 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 no. We uh, that, that was a fever dream. So I'll forget about it. I, I just, the, I'm just reading the tea leaves here. I think something happened, right? Yeah, I, I feel that too. I mean, again, you, you have to look at that, that first week post mania. I feel like mania was a, a great success, a very fun weekend, especially for those who got to attend or watch live. Right. Uh, but then you then you go to this raw where there is no Jay White, there is no Nick Aldis, there are no grand returns, there is no like big announcement. The only kind of maybe surprise you get, or yet you know, outside of like Matt Riddle coming back, is Brock beating up Cody. And then it's just kind of flat until Backlash. Backlash was an amazing show. Uh, the draft happens, and now it feels fresh. It feels different. And I think that it is necessary to show change, not only on TV, but behind the scenes. And, you know, from what from what I've heard, uh, they the plan was for Triple H to take full control post-draft. So hopefully they just let him do what he's doing, because I've been enjoying the shows. And you heard that not from a dirt sheet. You heard that from people in the wrestling business. Yes, yes, yes. Martin hasn't, we haven't really talked about it, but since Martin's somewhat famous out in L.A., people talk to him. Even rest <laughs> people talk to Martin. <laughs> they, they know, they know. Making that adult progressive money there. Um, <laughs> so uh, so uh, also this week we found out, uh, uh, actually Friday we found out, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens are going to put their tag titles on the line against Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa at Night of Champions, which it's a big match in and of itself, but even bigger by the fact that Sami Zayn is going to Saudi Arabia. Now, infamously, Sami, as someone of Syrian descent, has not been allowed to go to Saudi Arabia until this point. Now, before I wrote the article, I didn't want to just say, because the way Meltzer said it is Saudi changed uh, their laws so Syrians couldn't come in. I was like, well, that's a big change of tune. What happened here? I did a half ounce of research into this. So there's this League of Arab Nations and Saudi Arabia has let Syria back into this. So it isn't just like, oh, Syrians are okay. They're formalizing a relationship with Syria, which is take, I don't, I'm not a geopolitician. I don't know if that's good or bad, whatever. But this is an actual thing here where it looks like the, the bridge has actually been connected. Saudi Arabia is hosting some big summit this Friday. Representatives from Syria will be there. So end of an era, it would appear. And with that, Sammy could go. Sammy wants to go. And uh, Kevin Owens, who had not been going because Sammy couldn't go, is now going to go with Sammy. How do you feel about it? 